Hey y'all, it's Betsy from Happily Ever After, etc. And I am back with another garden tour. So it is the beginning of May, May 4th actually. So if you're a Star Wars fan, May the 4th be with you. I am a huge Star Wars fan, but I am an even bigger fan of this pink iris right here. So I figured we'd come out and we do the garden tour while the pink iris are blooming because I only have a few of them. Um, I found they're very expensive. So I bought four or five last year. Today, two of them are blooming after waiting for almost a year. I bought them last year. So I'm very excited to show them to you. And um, we're gonna get started. The window boxes are going crazy. All of the pink super tunias are going crazy and our summer flowers are starting to flower. On the other hand, the spring flowers, the gara, the foxglove, the iris, they are starting to go out of season. So we probably won't have them in another tour. The foxglove especially, I think this will be their last one, but we're gonna probably do a mid-May tour and the smaller pink fox clubs, they may still be around. The white ones will be done. The pretty iris will be done, but hydrangeas are just coming into bloom. Uh, my cauliflowers are just starting to bloom. We still have plenty to look forward to. So let's hop into it. As always, we're going to go around the corner, start at the stock tank garden, and work our way through and show you what's changed in the last two weeks. The garden changes so rapidly in the beginning of the season, so I'm so excited. Let's go. All right, y'all. So if we start on this side of the house, you can see that our stock tank planner is doing fabulously. Like <laughs> this little guy is definitely growing. You can see all the baby cucumbers in here. None are big enough to harvest yet, but they are, they are everywhere. So hopefully soon we will have cucumbers and then dun da da dun. So we have one, two, three, four, and I think the fifth seed might even be coming up back there five watermelon plants, which I only really needed one. So we might have to thin maybe one or two of those out, but we're going to see, we're going to see how they grow. Cucumber grows really, really fast, really, really ferociously. This is one cucumber plant. So if each of those watermelon plants grows like the cucumber, we cannot support all five in this stock tank garden, but the strawberries are doing great. I've been picking at least a handful off this one planter every day. And this little guy, if you remember in my planting video, were really struggling after that big rain where they were just roots and no flowers, no fruits. And they are finally fruiting and flowering. And hopefully I will start being able to harvest some from this guy shortly. And then I did finally buy a plant for this third hook, but I still need a cute container for it. So here's my little strawberry guy. I still really want to tackle this. So this little trash pile, I mean, my trash can is here. The rest of this is all things I use, but we'll see. And then you can see I started tilling the ground. We got to go all the way back there to come in and put my shed and uh, raised garden beds. So we're removing all of the weeds and the grass. I will probably, ex I'm thinking pea gravel, extend pea gravel back around the shed and the raised beds, but not sure. We have a few buds opening on this rose, which is interesting because they were like a light blush pink last year. And I had one bed that opened last week that was a light blush pink. So I'm not sure where this dark color is coming from. And then my coneflower tower. <laughs> These guys are all coming in really nice. The cosmos are still little, but once they all fill in, it'll just be a nice blend of cosmos and coneflowers over here. 
the gara, which is a spring plant, is pretty much petering out. There's a few blooms left, but not many. So he is almost done for this season. But I mean, you saw in last month's tour that it was big and beautiful when the rest of these things were small. And it is a perennial. This is its second year and it's grown double in size since last year. So as it keeps growing, you know, it'll get bigger and bigger every year. And then I do need to go back here and weed a little bit. I've got weeds coming in, but I've also got baby vinca and salvia. So I'm trying to let them grow enough that I can tell what's what. The angelonia growing in nicely from last year, except for this one. But I'm not ready to pull it out yet because like right here, you can see it is growing. Of course, all the vinca babies are doing well. I think I'm going to try transplanting those soon because I don't want them right here, but I do want them other places. And this Angelonia, the blue faced, blue angel faced Angelonia, it's coming in really well and actually has buds on it. So maybe we will have blue faced Angelonia soon. My pretty super tunia Vista bubblegum. I feel like that's one of those things you have to say the whole name every single time. It is doing well. Now my three marigolds on this side are not doing well. They were fine last week. This week, like this one looks dead. So help. I don't know if he's getting too much water, not enough water, too much sun. I don't know if I should move him. I don't know. Like this one just looks dead. This one looks kind of dead. This one looks okay, but not great. So, and I'll show you the three down on the other side for comparison. because They still look fine. My mom is doing okay, but I'm not quite sure why there's a big hole in it. Um, lamb's ear, my homestead verbena, and look, there is a bud on it. So I think it's much happier this week after the annual fertilizer instead of the rose tone. And my hydrangea is starting to bud and flower. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. Hydrangea is one of my favorite flowers. Then we have my new baby gumfrina around the foxglove. If you haven't seen that video, I love this gumfrina. And it's so perfect with the foxglove because they're similar colors. They're similar tall spires. So as the foxglove, as you can see, just about done for the season. As those go out, the gumfrina starts to fill in. And then the end of the season, that gumfrina just explodes throughout here and is a beautiful tall pink puffball element. So I like how those two things really work together for multi-seasonal interest. Up front, these guys are filling in. Hopefully they will just take over this whole little area, but they are a supposedly a perennial we'll see if they come back so but they're supposed to get quite big uh, my one gumfrina from last year is still doing well and my baby fox gloves so hopefully these will flower next year there's one of those gumfrinas with a few blooms on it so you can see kind of the idea of what those will grow up to look like and they get 28 inches tall so they really do fill in this whole area 24 inches tall by about two, three feet wide. And here we go. Now, I still don't know why this foxglove, not foxglove, why this lamb's ear is struggling. These are like the best in my whole garden. And this one is starting to crowd out my snapdragon. So I am tempted. Like you can see, there's a few spots right in here where I could come in and divide it. I am tempted to divide off this whole front part. That'll leave me a big enough plant and transplant some right over there in the middle of this guy and see if that will help him establish some new growth. I, I don't know. But before we go over across the way, let's not forget the new garden. So the new baby garden is doing well. My two pretty white foxglove are just about done for the season. And then I'm not 100% sure. I do have my lilies that we planted in honor of Lily coming up. Those are also seasonal. So 
Once the lilies are done, I will probably put some other annuals back in here to take the place of the foxglove and the lilies for the rest of the season, but I don't know what. The lobelia we planted here is doing well, and our little baby hydrangea that we transplanted from mom's house even has a bud on it, y'all. Also has a weed friend. Weed friend, go away. They always like to grow, you know? Right where the good stuff grows, because then you don't see it. All right, bubble gum doing well. All our baby zinnias. Zinnias are coming in nicely. Hopefully those will all fill in and we'll have big, beautiful blooms all throughout here. The agapanthus is doing great. Some foxglove for next year. Here's my pin cushions. And they still are not super budded up at all. Like these should be covered in blooms. And I only have a couple blooms on this one plant. And they're not very tall. So I don't know. Everyone else seems to grow pin cushion with such ease. And obviously I don't. Salvia is starting to really grow in and getting lots of little buds. And soon enough, this whole area will be pink salvia. My oak leaf hydrangea is doing well. I don't know that it will flower this year, but it looks great. All except this one little baby is still struggling. But this one's finally popped up and it's even putting out more runners down here. Um, so I think I might move the, the block and the umbrella permanently away now. I think he's established well enough that he's not needing that extra shade in the afternoon anymore. We'll see. But... Petunia, Petunia, Lobelia. The little Laura Pedlums are still doing well, but they haven't put out any new growth in a little bit. But they're, they're like in their little spots, I think. Here's where our swoosh of salvia starts. So all of this will just be a riot of pink salvia eventually. You can see... A little bit of new growth there. Uh, Lily's coming up on this side. Here starts our swoosh of cosmos. Our sad little Laura Pedlum on this side. He still looks like a stick. And speaking of sticks, the wisteria stick has growth. There we go. You see that? Do you remember when we planted this? I honestly did not think it was going to grow. And it is growing. Now, honestly, or honestly, obviously, it's going to take years to get as big as the one we planted. But do you remember the trellising video we did? Look at this. So we, we brought the whips over to the tree, and they are growing up and around the tree just like we wanted. So... Good job, little wisteria. One day, you two will be on a tree. All right, let me get out of here. All right. So now if we come down the path, I love this shot right now, minus my tripod, but you know, love those iris. One day when all those those pretty pink iris and the white iris keep multiplying and I have multiple iris at a time, it will be beautiful. Right now, I'm just excited that any of them are blooming. But after we transplanted those sweet peas, for mom, the new ones are doing great. I do need to start training them a little to come up the egg trellis. Excuse me. There we go. This one's so much fuller than the other one. And we pinched these back last week to four inches high. And you can see they are already putting on new growth. So hopefully before long they will flower. But dun dun dun. dun. Here's the money shot, y'all. Let's get started on this half of the garden. All right, y'all, so this half of the garden is blooming quite a bit today, which is really nice. So 
you can see that the window boxes are filling in that Super Tunia Vista Bubble Gum by Proven Winners is going bananas, literally bananas. The Verbena looks great, but I don't even know if my little thrillers in the middle there are going to be able to keep up. They're supposed to get quite big, but not as big as that bubble gum. So then down here, I do have a couple butterfly bushes I need to water. These are going to go by the new shed, so I'm just watering them until that happens. But my lace cap hydrangea is starting to flower. And I cannot wait. Hopefully in our middle of May tour, all these buds will just be bursting with color. And they should all be pink, so that'll be another great pop of pink. And then my pink salvia is starting to come into bloom, even these. The pink pentas that we planted, what, last week? Y'all helped me with that. They are starting to um, bounce back. They were really stressed. And the salvia we cut back, looking beautiful. Petunia's looking great. It'll be really fun at the end of the season. But here is my crowning glory moment. One, another one down there. Two of my pink irises are blooming at the moment. So this one is a day old. She is still glorious though. We had a huge rain last night, so not quite as glorious as yesterday, but still beautiful. I will put some pictures up of yesterday, but she's literally amongst the roses. And then hopefully all these cone flowers starting to bud up. We will have a bunch of blooms right here later in the season. So zinnia babies, still not 100% sure if I'm going to just put those around here a little better or transplant them. Some of those snapdragons that we cut back are starting to rebloom. Oh, this right here, we turn around. The little angel and the roses and the iris. Hey, cinnamon. That might be my favorite moment in the garden right now. These marigolds are doing much better than the ones on the other side. More beautiful roses. Oh, so pretty. The foxgloves we planted out here are doing great. Hopefully next year those will be big and beautiful. There is, oop, there's another iris bloom bud. Right back here's another foxglove that we planted. If you remember in the nursery video there, we planted those out. And then I still have not transplanted these sweet peas, and I need to do that this week, or they are going to be unmanageable. But if we just pretend those don't exist, the Super Tunia bubblegum we planted in last week's video um, and cut back are already starting to bush out and flower, which is a fun little pink moment right here. And then we transplanted this Lobelia and that Petunia. And this Petunia looking fantastic. This Lobelia is taking a bit longer to, to bounce back, but he's not dead. He's looking a lot better even today than he did last week. So we're going to keep watering him. See what happens. These salvia are coming in. There is my other pink iris. I will walk you over there, but how pretty. I cannot wait one more until next year when instead of one pink iris bloom, I have multiples because right now I planted... A bunch of iris, but I have pink and some whites, and there's really just one at a time. Cinnamon, where are you going? I'll be back. Okay, got Cinnamon back. She just decided she needed to go sit in the shade while she waited for the video. But you can see this window box <laughs> where we planted just one verbena and one petunia here, and then the thriller. It's not nearly as full as the one down here in the sun, but that's kind of how they go. So everything on this half of the garden in the sun does a little better 
then everything down here in the shade, they'll catch up with time. So I'm not super worried. My little homestead verbena starting to finally bloom. And then down here, we have our gumfrina that we just planted behind the peonies. They are looking beautiful. Still need to harvest a little more seed from my lupin for next year. And the begonias that we transplanted, they're all looking great. Still not 100% sure. I put some delphinium babies out here. If you guys know better, I cannot decide. Are these delphinium babies or are these weeds? Because I've got quite a few coming up over here where I put out my seeds. But just, just a few. And I know delphiniums don't direct seed very well but I just didn't have time to sow them indoors. So figured what the heck. Do have a few blooms on this hydrangea, but not nearly as many as the ones down there in the, the sun. But this is a pretty view of the garden. We don't get very often. And then we're just gonna come right back here. My white hibiscus, this is ballet slippers. Supposed to be candy crushed, but I got the wrong one. The lady I got it from gave me the wrong one. But she's going to give me a candy crush in a little bit. That's going to go in my pot. But here is that pink one. It's just beautiful. I mean, I love all irises, but I really wanted that pink. And as you can see, it has a secondary bud. So we will get a second flower on that one. All right, let's hop up to the porch. I'll show you what's happening up there. But we got to clean this up back here a little. That is the end of this side of the garden. All right, I did want to show you as we go down the big pretty window box. Even since we just installed the drip, it's gotten so much bigger. Like y'all, look at all those blooms. I did just fertilize it like four days ago. So hopefully before long, all, of, all the way down will be blooms, blooms, blooms. But I mean, you can see even the smallest box down there is still pretty good and I've just been leaving my hose here since I have to water these butterfly bushes but cannot wait till the shed gets in and I can plant those in the ground but for now let's just zoop pop over here to the porch so these little guys since I put them on drip are receiving a little too much water so I came in yesterday turn that down hopefully that will help and I just deadheaded him but he's deadheaded again deadheading the violas however if you were with me for that video we have a whole new riot of blooms almost too many you can almost not see my little fairy girl but you know that's a good problem to have of course we had that bad rainstorm right last night so some of them are falling over a bit and it's okay it's still very pretty i just wish i'd planted a little earlier in the season because the violas have gone nuts and the snapdragons are a little stunted. So instead of that tall aspect in the back and the violas spilling over in the front, the blooms are all very similar heights, but it's still beautiful. And we are probably only gonna have these for another month or so before we put in spring flowers anyways, or spring. These are spring, summer. So then we come around and I think my dahlia liked its fertilizer because where there were no buds, we now have quite a few. And this one's even thinking about opening or it is open. I think it might be eaten. Maybe I have something eat, eating this guy. Maybe that's why he's struggling. I love dahlias, but they hate me. My tulips and hyacinth bulbs that I was leaving out to collect sun and I need to get all that taken care of, but for now, we're just focusing on the pretty. 
I love how this container turned out because the snapdragons are actually tall and the violas are coming forward and the ferns in the back really give it that tall aspect. So this pot is definitely working for me. We even have that silver falls coming over the front, which is just pretty, 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 pretty. And then this is the little trio that I'm working on right now. The pot for this verbena, this is a pink verbena, is supposed to come today. And so the verbena is going to go up top and it will get big and then it will spill over. So I want it to spill all the way down this little stand. And then I think I'm going to put a pink pinta in this big pot, but... I just got this pot and then I have another pot coming that is similar style. So I'll have a little trio of pots here and that will be very pretty. But that is it. Ferns are doing great on drip. They're really liking it. There's a backwards view of the garden. This is what I see when I'm relaxing up here. So cannot wait to show you how the garden's doing in another two to three weeks mid-may but for now this was my beginning of may update i hope you have a great day if you love star wars like i do go watch one of the movies i think i'm gonna watch attack of the clones because that is my personal favorite and now i'm gonna get ready for mother's day so have a good one